Hello, this is Alex with Pongo Techno Valley Weekly News. Here's the news from the second week of September. First up, Naver to present Hyperclova thesis at the EMNLP. Naver announced on September 3rd that it will present a core research paper on its superscale AI Hyperclova at EMNLP 2021 an International Natural Language Processing Conference, or an NLP conference. EMNLP is considered one of the most prestigious academic societies in the field of natural language processing, along with ACL. It will be held from November 7th to the 11th in the Dominican Republic. Neighbor's Hyperclova research paper was selected for the main conference presentation. The purpose of this study is to introduce the super-scale Korean language model Hypoclova, the purpose of this study is to introduce the superscale Korean language model Hyperclova and the data used for its learning, and to verify the performance of the models of various sizes. Naver will also present six papers of collaborative research with KAIST, Korea University, and Seoul National University at the conference. The Naver AI lab head Ha jong said, the publication of this paper is a meaningful achievement in the sense that this time, the value of Korean language AI was recognized in the global natural language processing academia that had been centered around English. Next up, Nexon's core title, Project Magnum, goes to PlayStation. Nexon's new project, Project Magnum, will be released on the PlayStation platform. PlayStation version teaser video was first released on September 2nd and surpassed 500,000 views in just one day of its release. Project Magnum is a new game in the looter shooter genre developed by Nexon subsidiary Nat Games. It was one of the seven key projects announced by Nexon on September 5th. Project Magnum is in a genre that Nat Games is trying for the first time. The looter shooter is a genre that mixes RPG elements with a point-and-click style shooting game. Like a first-person or third-person shooter game, players go into battles and defeat enemies to acquire items and develop their characters. Especially, it is going to display fast speed battles by using high-quality graphics that are close to real life, various skills and special movements with wires and various firearms. It will also add elements that will continuously motivate players such as cooperative play to attack bosses with other players, item farming, and character growth. For our third story of the week, Kakao Entertainment turns the key to realize its dream of becoming a global entertainment company. Kakao Entertainment is taking a leap forward to become a global entertainment company. On September 1st, it ended the merger with Melon Company, which operates Melon, the largest music streaming platform operator in Korea, and fired the signal for a leap forward. By merging Melon Company, CISs, or company in company like Kakao Page and Kakao M, were integrated into the music, story, and media sectors. Through integration, Kakao Entertainment is aiming for a stronger synergy effect among its subsidiaries. One official from Kakao Entertainment said, we are considering various ways to provide benefits to platform users in the Kakao community. In terms of content planning and production, an improvement in the intellectual property value change can be expected. A web novel or webtoon IP can be used as a reference in production of dramas or films. Kakao Entertainment currently has 8,500 original IPs. In terms of industry sectors, the story division stood out the most in the global market. Kakao Webtoon, which launched in Thailand last June, ranked first in sales just three months after the platform was launched. Picoma, which launched a Webtoon service in Japan in 2016, has been ranked first in monthly sales since July of last year. Based on this overseas advancement know-how, Kakao Entertainment is planning to expand in Europe, Greater China, and Southeast Asia within this year. For our final big story of the day, Pangyo Startup Zone recruiting third new tenant companies 
until September 17th. The Gyeonggi Center for Creative Economy and Innovation is recruiting third new tenant companies in 2021 for the Pangyo Startup Zone until September 17th. The Pangyo Startup Zone is the largest startup support space in Korea established by the Ministry of SMEs and Startups and it is operated by the Korea Institute of Startups and Entrepreneurship and the Gyeonggi Center for Creative Economy and Innovation. It focuses on fostering promising startups in new industries, and it's located on the 6th to 8th floors of the corporate support hub in Pangyo, 2nd Techno Valley. It has about 130 dedicated office spaces for companies and 33 meeting rooms supported by around 5 venture capital and investment companies, plus around 8 supporting agencies. In addition, it provides support service by sectors needed for corporate operation with a global testbed that can implement an overseas mobile communication environment, a 3D production developing room where prototypes can be designed and manufactured, a four language interpretation and translation service in English, Chinese, Japanese and Spanish, and a KT Cloud open space that supports technology through collaboration. This time, it will recruit eight companies and it is open for prospective entrepreneurs and companies in business for seven years or less on the date of the recruitment announcement. The companies should be in data, network, AI, system semiconductors, future cars, biohealth, and IoT. That's it for your main news stories. Here's your quick news of the week. First up, Smilegate Investment invests in Vietnamese pharmaceutical distribution startup by Med. The Korea Consortium, led by Smilegate Investment, participated in the round funding of BiMed, a Vietnamese pharmaceutical distribution startup, and invested $5 million, or about 5.8 billion won. BiMed succeeded in acquiring a total of 8.8 .8 million US dollars, or 10.22 billion won, through this new round of funding. Next up for our second quick news of the week, Hancom Life Care signs an 8.4 billion won contract to supply gas masks to the Defense Acquisition Program Administration. Hancom Life Care will supply 8.38 billion won worth of items, 40 types of items including the K5 gas mask, to the Defense Acquisition Program Administration. This contract is equivalent to 5.52% of its sales and 151.8 billion won in the consolidated financial statements of last year. The contract period is from today to November 4th of next year. And finally, Krafton delivers scholarships to Gaemyung University Digipin Game Engineering students. Krafton announced on September 1st that it had agreed to a development fund of 29 million won with alumni to provide scholarships for students of Digipen Game Engineering from Gaemyung University. And that's it for your Pangyo Techno Valley Weekly News. My name is Alex Sigrist, and I'll see you next time.